Open your Bibles, please. I guess today's message will go along with uh, the kind of the mood that's in here today. Psalm number 27. Psalm 27 and starting at verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelties. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I want to speak this morning about the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. I have a couple of other scriptures, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. I think we'll get to them a little bit later on. But I I want to talk a little bit about how to really see the goodness of the Lord. David wrote this psalm, and he's saying that one of the things that he could depend on was when he cried out to the Lord, the Lord answered him. Now, he says, when I cry to the Lord with my voice, Mm -hmm. because there are times when we are hurt and we don't talk. We just sit around and we kind of brood about things. We don't really speak out about it. There are times when we are faced with situations in our life that we are sometimes embarrassed about or sometimes just not ready to talk with other people about. But when we open our mouth and talk to God about it, we have an assurance that God will hear our prayer. He will hear us when we talk to him. He goes on so far as to say that I know that even when mom and dad turn their back on me, I can depend on God. I don't know who you can, other than a a wife or a husband, that you are close enough to that you can consider them being as close as your mom and dad. Uh Because parents have your back. Parents will defend you when you're wrong. Sometimes parents will defend you and be wrong in their own self in defending you. But you know you can depend on mom and daddy. Even when you cut up, you might be in trouble. But you know you can depend on mom and daddy to be there. But David said there are times even when my mom and my dad are not there on my side. They forsake me. But that's when I know that God will pick up and he will take over and he will be the one that will support me when nobody else will. And so he is he's laying out a case for the things that he is about to say. Because there's something about the way we believe in things that can mess us up. And so David's laying out this case that there are times when situations are so bad that I can't depend on any humans, and I know that when I talk to God, he hears me, but I don't always see the hand of God move when I want to. Sometimes God moves in a way that uh, it, it's like muscle growth. You can go lift weights every day for a month and you're not going to see any growth in your muscles. No. You know, we want to we want to see God move suddenly most of the time. We're not accustomed to the 
the way God does move usually, which is an in the process of time. That, we don't like that. We're looking for the miracle. You know, we get, we'll break out our Clark Sisters CD, and, and I'm looking for a miracle because we want God to do something. We're not expecting him to work it out over the process of time. And if we're not careful, if God does it in the process of time, like many a man that has started lifting weights and don't see the results right away, they give up and walk away and let their uh, membership to the gym expire. The gym make more money on folks that quit than they do on folks that stay. That's because when we try, listen, I think everybody in here can relate to this. When you go on a diet, you feel like you've starved yourself for three days. You're going to jump on the scale. Keep the scales in the bathroom. So, you know, when you get finished using the bathroom, surely I've lost some weight. And we'll jump on it again. It's frustrating when you're just excited and nothing happens. Amen. That's why Weight Watchers have you come to their meetings. They want you to come there because folks are there to encourage you. They don't want you to just pick up the diet book and go home because you're going to get discouraged when you don't see results. It's the same way with our walk with God. There are times when God is working on our behalf, but because we cannot see it right away, we get discouraged and walk away from God. David said it like this, I had fainted. When you faint, you lose consciousness. You're not aware of what's going on around you. He said, I would have lost consciousness of God unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, I don't know if you caught the way he said that. He didn't say I had fainted unless I had seen the goodness of the Lord. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There's a difference between seeing something and believing in something. Belief is a powerful thing. Belief is one of those things that can be used for good or bad. I'm going to use some terminology here that may be difficult to grab a hold of, but I'm going to explain it. I promise I'm going to do that. There's a thing called belief perseverance. That's when you have the tendency to hang on to something that you believe, even when evidence is given to the contrary. You would disbelieve the proof and keep hanging on to what you believe. That's a bad thing. It can prevent you from being honest about yourself. It can prevent you from being honest about what you're believing in. You don't believe it. There was a group of folks from Indianapolis, Indiana that moved out to California, and then finally they moved. I forgot where they moved to. Guyana. They moved to Guyana. They believed in what somebody was teaching. Even when they knew something wasn't right, they still clung on to what they believed. And as a result, Jim Jones got almost a thousand of them to kill herself because they in the in the 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 face of evidence against what they were being told they still hung on to what they believed adolf hitler was another one that got the people to believe that he could get them out of trouble and in the face of danger in the face of things wasn't quite lining up right they still believed because they wanted to believe in something. There was another man named William Miller. Back in the 1800s, he taught that on October 18th, 18, or 1944, that the Lord was going to return. The rapture was going to take place. He had stirred up a great movement across this country. A lot of people were believing what he said. And then on October the 19th, after the rapture didn't take place, they still clung to their belief, so much so that when he came out and said, I miscalculated, it's going to be in 1945 or 1845, they went ahead and 
changed right along with him because they didn't want to disbelieve. They wanted to keep on believing him. As a result, a group of people, I think three religions, was formed out of the Millerite movement, all because they didn't want to let go of the belief that this man was wrong. They wanted to hold on to it. A lot of times people in this country will hang on to the idea that our founding fathers were great Christian men who had nothing but good in their heart for mankind. Bear that, not withholding manifest destiny that told us that we had a right to go from one coast to the other coast and kill anybody that got in our way and take the land because it belonged to us. Not withholding that we come to some place that already belonged to somebody. That we brought slaves to this country. That we killed people in this country. The Irish had it really bad in this country when they first came. They were treated terrible. There were many Irish people that were lynched because of how much they were hated. And yet our founding fathers were great Christians. We hang on to that belief even in the face of proof that they weren't such good guys. So on Thanksgiving Day, we stand around and we give thanks to the Lord for all of this food. We don't pay any attention to the fact that the first Thanksgiving was because some folks that was already here helped out the pilgrims, but eventually they killed them. I'm not against Thanksgiving. Go on and give thanks. I know I'm going to eat some turkey on Thanksgiving. I'm going to eat more than that. Amen. Going to give me some sweet potato pie. I'm going to get me some stuffing, some chicken, some ham. No chitlins. I heard that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm going to eat and give thanks. Amen. But I'm not holding on to something, a belief that I'm celebrating what God did in helping our great Christian founding fathers. Those people are going to answer to God for their own self. Ain't got nothing to do with what I believe today. All I know is, is that there is a way that you can believe that's wrong. And you can believe so strongly in your wrong that it changes the way you see the world around you. It'll cause you to have what they call confirmation bias. It's where you are willing to go to the National Enquirer and read something, and because it confirms what you believe, you accept that. You don't read the New York Times. You read the National Enquirer because they agree with what you think. No amen. Come on, sisters. Maybe I should have said Us Magazine or People. We we'll believe them things that we read in those newspapers and, and magazines, even though we know we know that they're not telling the truth. But because it agrees with what I think, I go along with it. And when someone else comes up with proof to the contrary, I just disagree with them. Now, I know I read it somewhere. It also causes us to have a different type of bias where I'm going to hang on to what I've been taught even though I know what I've been taught is wrong. That's a dangerous state to be in. That's where people will take the word of someone else that they trust. That's how conspiracy theories spread. You know, someone heard somebody on a talk radio show that claimed to be an expert on something, that read somebody's blog that's an expert on something, so you know it's real. That's how come folks is believing in space aliens and all that. Ain't no space aliens, y'all, except for angels and seraphims, cherubims, and and that type of stuff, they may not be from this planet, and I consider them to be life forms, but there's not no little gray men with egg-shaped heads walking around with big eyes, sneaking and taking folks in the middle of the night. That's not happening. Don't believe that. I don't care how many newspaper articles they got about it. You just keep on leaving them newspapers at the cash register in the bin right by the checkout counter. Don't pick them up and buy them because they ain't telling you nothing true. They lying. Amen. Hey man, it, 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 if the aliens was able to do that, that, that means that they can cross space. They're a lot smarter than we are. There's no way that we would sneak up on an ant colony and, and, and 
traps one of the ants where nobody else could see. One wandered off by himself. Let's sneak and get that one so the rest of them don't see. We don't care if they see. If we're going to get an ant, we're going to take them. And we don't, because we know that we're bigger than the rest of them. That you might get two or three on me and bite me, but you ain't hurting me. If you do, I'll just step on you. That's the way it would be if someone could come across intergalactic space and come to this country and come to this world, this planet. They're not interested in hiding themselves from us. They could do some damage to us without us ever having seen their faces. So I'm sure they're not worried about hiding. Amen. A little logic there. And y'all can have that for free. Ain't no charge on that. There are some good beliefs. There are some beliefs that uh, that if I keep on working every day, first time I get a job, if I keep on working every day, I'm going to get a paycheck. That's incentive for me to keep showing up every day to work. I don't have to have had a paycheck yet, but I just believe that they're going to give me my money at the end of my week or two weeks or however long it is. Sometimes they take longer. Sometimes it's three weeks or a month before you get your first check. But we keep getting up every day, borrowing money from somebody to get enough gas to get to work every day. We'll do that. We will get up and catch the bus to work every day, even though we haven't picked up a check in three weeks, but we keep on going because we believe that they're going to give me my paycheck. That's a good thing. There's times when we believe that family and friends will stand by our side in the midst of trouble and tragedy. We believe that they're going to be with us. If we didn't believe things like that, we would be miserable people. We would be uh, folks without hope. You know, if we didn't think that anybody would stand by our side when we have trouble. We believe that our pastor will be by our side when we're in the midst of trouble. We believe that our friends, the preachers, the church is praying. We'll tell somebody, go to church tonight and tell them pray for my family. Why? Because we believe that they're going to request prayer. We believe the church is going to pray. We believe that God's going to answer those prayers. So we ask. Even though I don't see them, even though I don't hear the request, I know they're going to go and request prayer anyway. And that God is going to do something. The Apostle Paul looked at it like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. He said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If the only hope I have in this life is to live a good life and then I die and that's it, I'm above all men most miserable. David said, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. So I don't want to do like Reverend Ike. You know, Reverend Ike was, he made his fame off of talking about by and by. Y'all talking about by and by. You're going to get your reward in the sky. I want my reward now. He got rich off of that. He wasn't waiting for his reward. But David said, listen, I believe that God is going to do this for me. I believe God is working on my behalf. Not just now, but I won't rest until I awake in his presence. I know that God is going to do something in this life and in the life to come. My hope is not just in what I'm going to get when I get to heaven. But I know God is going to take care of me now. I might not see the help now, but I know the help is coming. I might not know the help when it gets here, but I know the help is going to get here. I might not understand how God is going to help me out, but I know God is going to help me out. If I didn't believe that, if I didn't believe that God was going to help me, I would lose my hope. I would lose consciousness. I would lose all help because then I wouldn't have anything to trust in, no one to believe in. So Paul said, listen, I understand what David's talking about. Yes, you've got to believe God's going to help you. But if the only help we're going to get in this life is just our belief in Christ, then I'm above everybody most miserable because I know God is going to help me. I've seen what God is doing. It might not be right when I want it, but I know God's going to do it. He might not give me exactly the way I ask him to give it, but what he gives me is good and right. Another scripture in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says this, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. It is not because of all the things that God has done, but it's because of what God is doing. 
in our life that we don't faint. We don't lose consciousness. But in verse 8 he said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but we are not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Do you see all of the things that he talks about that we've got to go through? We are going to have trouble in our life, but that doesn't mean it's the end of everything. We are going to be distressed. But that doesn't mean that I got to sit around crying the blues. Yes, I got problems in my life. But that doesn't mean that I'm sitting around talking about where is God. I don't understand why God would let me go through this. I don't see the Lord anywhere. Somebody please help me. He said, no, I'm in distress, but I'm not perplexed. I'm not tore up mentally about this thing. I'm not all distressed over it. Then he goes on and he says, yes, I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted. Yes, people are against me. Folks have turned their back on me. Some folks are trying to get me. But that's all right. I know that even though I'm persecuted, God hasn't forsaken me. God has still got my back. Y'all might be coming against me. My mom and dad might be coming against me. But God hasn't forsaken me. God is still on my side. He said, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. And I know that if he said that he won't leave me or forsake me, I know he's still there. I might not see him, but he's there. I might not feel him, but I know he's there. I know God has still got my back. I know that even though I have been cast down and persecuted, that God still has not forsaken me. He said, I might get knocked down, but you haven't destroyed me. I'll lay on the ground and still keep on praising God. You can knock me down and I'm still going to worship him. You can knock me down and I'm still going to tell folks about the goodness of Jesus. Take my house from me. Take my car from me. Take my family from me. But I'm still going to praise Jesus. You can't stop me. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how much trouble you bring in my life. I don't care about the turmoil you might be causing for me. You can't stop me from praising God. I'm going to praise him even if it makes you mad. I'm going to praise him till I feel glad. I'm just going to keep on praising him because I know no matter what, God is still on my side. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to see God do some things now. I might not be seeing it right now with my eyes, but I know I'm going to see some things. People can come against me and tell me, now where is your God? I know exactly where he is. He's still right here, down on the inside. He ain't gone nowhere. I still got him. I'm still feeling his goodness. I'm still feeling the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't take that from me. My mother used to say, get a good education. That's one thing folks can't take from you. As long as you got your mind educated, they can't take that from you. All I'm saying is this. I appreciate that, but that's natural. Get the Holy Ghost. They can't take that from you. Get the joy of the Lord down inside. Nobody can take that from you. Make sure that you got what you need. They can't get that from you. They can talk about you. They can lock you up. They can put you in prison, but they can't take that from you. The only thing you can do is walk away and give it up. But as long as you believe that you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I don't care about the problems that I'm going through right now. I know he's going to do something in my life. I know God is going to bring me out of this. I know he's going to lift me up in places where nobody else. Matter of fact, the scripture said, I'm in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. As long as I stay in Christ, I'm in heavenly places. And you can't bring me down from it. And Isaiah... Isaiah said it like this, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You want to know where God is? Get in some place where nobody else can get to with God. You want to feel the power of God? Get some place where nobody else can get to you. Where is that? In my prayer life. When I'm talking to Jesus, in my praise life, when I see people and they ask me, how am I doing? I'm doing good. Yes, but ain't you the one that just lost thus and so? Maybe, but I'm still doing good. I still got the goodness of the Lord. He hasn't left me. He hasn't forsaken me. I might not see it right now, but I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe God's going to do this thing. 
I know God's going to move. I know God's going to deliver. And you can't make me believe nothing different. Even though there's evidence to the contrary, the devil is snatching everything from me. That's all right. I'm believing to the contrary that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord, not just in the world to come. I'm believing God is moving right now. You want to stop God? Stop believing. You want God to quit blessing? Quit asking. You have not because you're not asking. Lord, bless me. Lord, I know this situation looks bad, but I'm looking to you for help. All I'm looking for right now is just some encouragement. God can come along and speak some encouragement in your heart. I remember Sister Ash said one time, she said, I'm hurt. I believe God's going to deliver. But is it all right if I cry? Yeah, you can cry because God understands that heart. God knows. It's not because you lost faith. It's not because you lost confidence. You just hurt. That's all right to be hurt, but don't lose your confidence in God. Don't stop believing that you'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because as long as you believe, you will see it. God's not going to let you die and not see his goodness. Look, even Stephen, on his death, they stoned him to death. Stephen looked up and saw the Lord sitting up in heaven. Even in the midst of dying, I'm seeing the goodness of the Lord. Y'all can't stop me from seeing the goodness of the Lord. The only thing I can do is turn my head. But Stephen said, y'all might stone me. Father, forgive him. He looked up and he saw heaven opened up. He saw some things. You know why? Because he believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I, I might be getting ready to take my last breath, but I'm seeing the goodness of God. Y'all can't take that from me. So I just want to encourage us. You can see the goodness of the Lord. David finished it up like this. He said, just wait on the Lord. Don't walk away from God. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't say that I'm not going to serve God no more. Where is God? He said, I, I know he's going to do it. Now, all I can do is just wait on the Lord. I'm going to be of good courage. I'm going to keep on doing what God asked me to do. He'll strengthen me. I, I, nobody else may come along and give me any kind of water, spiritual water or spiritual food. That's all right. I'm going to wait on the Lord. He's going to strengthen my heart. God's going to make sure that I have everything I need. My thirst is going to get quenched because God's going to see to it. You know why? Because I'm waiting for the Lord. I'm not waiting for the mortgage company. I'm not waiting for the car dealership. I'm waiting for the Lord. He's going to strengthen my heart. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep on trusting in Jesus. And I know God's going to make it all right. You can see the goodness of the Lord, saints. You can see the goodness of the Lord. You can see the hand of God move. You might not see it move right away, but you're going to see his hand move. Sometimes you don't even see the hand of God move until after he done moved you somewhere. And you look back and say, wait a minute, didn't I used to be? Didn't I used to have? trouble with how did I get over here sometimes God move like that he'll move you without you even knowing it so you just keep on believing you keep on holding out hope that God's going to show you God's going to do it I'm believing God's going to do it not just for me I, I believe as long as you're doing like you're supposed to I believe God's going to do it for you too Amen. We can sit around and, and, and we can talk about the goodness of Jesus in the midst of trouble. Because I know God's going to do something. Amen. Amen. You just keep on holding on. Keep on. Don't, don't give up on Jesus. Don't give up on what you got. His goodness is here. His mercy is here. His help is here. His strength is here. His encouragement is here. He's ready to do it all for us. You just keep on hanging on. Wait on the Lord. Jesus. Be a good courage. It's going to look rough. It's going to look hard. It's going to look bad. Jesus. But you just be, you keep on holding on to your courage and keep on waiting for God. He'll strengthen you. And then he'll let you see his hand move in ways that you never thought you would see his hand move before. God will show you some things. Sometimes you sit back and say, I didn't even believe that God would do that much. I thought he was going to go two inches and look, at he went a foot. 
The scripture says, now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above what you are able to ask. You can't even think about what God can do for you. He can do above that. You think God can give you whatever? God said, I can give you more than that. You ain't even thinking big enough for what I can do. You just keep on believing. I'll do it. You can think little and God will still bless big. Don't believe them preachers is telling you, listen, you got to be specific. You don't know how to be specific. He said above what you are able to think. You don't even know how to think about God the right way. You don't even know how to think about the right kind of blessings. But God knows how to give them whether you can think it or not. Now unto him that is able to do. He'll do it. You just keep on believing. Amen. Is there anybody here that wants to be saved today? God is able to fill you with his spirit. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost and give you the power that you need. I know he said I had fainted. Some folks is fainting. They don't have the Holy Ghost. They don't know what God can do for them. They don't know the power of what God can do in their life. Amen. But if you want to know, get the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, this time let us stand.